Hello and welcome to the Kerry Garden Show. Alan Finn checking back in with you here from Boils of Calorglan. Hope you're well, hope your garden is looking well. And remember as always, do send us in some questions if you have any questions you want us to answer. Right now though, it's time to uh, have a little chat about composting and some stuff for hedging with our gardening expert, Trish. Well, I'm delighted to welcome back Trish to the Kerry Garden Show here in Boils of Calorglan. Trish, how are you? I'm very good, Alan. Thank you. Good to see you after your break. <laughs> I know, yes. I had a little extended break there. But Pamela <laughs> gave you the week off she last did. week. She did. She gave me the week really, off. Yeah, She's yeah, an excellent yeah. show talking about outdoor lighting. So I was sitting down with a lovely light ambience around my patio. You were sitting over there with a cup of tea in your hand when you go away. I know you were. <laughs> so anyway, here we are in the middle of August and uh, there's still lots and lots of things that people should be doing in their gardening. Uh, we've got a bit of compost bin here which we'll talk about a little later but we're going to start talking about uh, looking after your hedges Trish that's where we're going to start that's right yeah now is the time coming on between the middle end of August that you can actually start cutting your hedges and people go why do I need to cut a hedge it's so much work and everything the thing is if you don't cut your hedge what's going to happen is that the growth is going to go up and you're going to get it bare down at the base right. so it's very very important to cut the front of it the back of it and the top of it and when you do that then it encourages new side shoots and then side shoots then make the hedge nice and bushy now the reason i suppose we wait until towards the end of august is that you have to watch for nesting birds sometimes in hedges so okay. if you know if they're there obviously leave them you're not don't want to be upsetting them or cutting them or the mm -hmm. young are still young mm -hmm. so usually around the end of august you should be fine to be cutting hedges okay uh, the hedges we would be it would be the formal hedges in the garden we're not talking about okay. the roadside hedges or anything like right. that right yeah yeah yeah. because so, the farmers have been looking after that themselves they have and again now I mean? they and can start until september, september either. exactly That's the they've law got a certain that. window so. so what i'm talking about is your formal hedges that you use as your windbreak to protect your garden to protect your house from the mm -hmm. wind coming in so you're talking about the likes of the grisolinia and mm -hmm. we also have the laurel then as well now there's yeah. com two completely leaves here one is a huge leaf and the other is a smaller, smaller leaf, leaf yeah. so again when you're cutting i suppose if you've got a very large or long hedge you're not going to go out with the clipping shears your Are hands you, would be broken, they'd be broken, they? and you'd be there for the week, Alan, and you yeah, wouldn't you be would. able to get it. Now, I'm sure some people do, and it's a great way to, to oh, pass is. the time oh, and everything, is. you yeah. know. I but remember my father years ago that didn't have anything like this, yeah. and it was a hedge clippers that hedge he used clippers. to do it, and yeah. the week he was at it. I'd say if you had the radio out, tune yeah. to Radio That's Kerry, it, you could get through it. Go. So what I have here is okay. the hedge trimmers. Now, this is a battery-operated one. Ger went through them there a couple Featured of weeks ago. Featured them a ago. couple of weeks ago, yeah. And that would be the best one to use if you've got a long area to do. Now, when you're cutting your hedge, people wonder, do I start at the top? Where do I start? Yes, good question. So yeah, that's a basically what you do is you get your hedge trimmers and you start down at the bottom. Okay. And you have a sweeping movement going up. Right. Now, okay, now what would be the main reason for that? The is main this... reason for that, Alan, is that if you're going up the hedge and you've got a, a branch sticking out or a knot of wood, okay. if you were going, starting at the top and working your way down, it could actually... A bit of resistance. Exactly. You kind of put a bit more power into it. And then once it goes, you could actually... You could do damage to do your damage legs, to your, your foot feet. or so legs. it's okay. very, very important safety-wise yeah. as well. Yeah. So try and go up, because if you go up then and you get stuck in this piece of wood, it's not going to go any further. Yeah. So you're better yeah. off that way. Okay, and you have a bit more control over it, I guess, as well, well too. Well, see, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And while we're talking safety, um, you know, of course, it is very important. And I know you've got a, a lot of stuff here. So we've got the ear defender for any... Um, yeah, a lot of the machines, whether it's a petrol one, whether it's electric one, battery one... They all have mm -hmm. got a certain amount of eyes. So wear your earmuffs to protect your ears. Yeah. Your goggles then as well, because when you're cutting, there's Lots going of to be bits of pieces bits. could fly no, all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Do you know so you wear don't your want goggles, it in your eyes. Protect your eyes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, if you are on the roadside, that your formal hedge your is just vest. at the top of your garden, wear your high vis vest. Put out your cones. Even have somebody with traffic if you're on a main road. Yeah, have to be extremely. Could be a small little back road as well, which you know people just are, are very, see, very that's conscious it. of. And, and when you're cutting a hedge, you're obviously concentrating on your hedge. Yeah. the noise is there. You're not aware. And if you have of your the your your ear defenders you. on, you won't be able to hear a car coming or exactly, anything like that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the other thing then as well is when cutting a hedge is. Do we cut it straight up 
or do we slant it or what do we do with it? Yes. So like that now, you'd have it square at the bottom and then you'd slant it in slightly at the top of it. Okay. Now, again, people are wondering, why do you do that? Yeah. If you have it slanted in slightly, it means that the sunlight can reach put, the bottom. Exactly. Okay. Whereas if it's out square the whole way down, the bottom is in the shade, there's not enough light, the leaves start dropping and yeah. then it's bare down the base. And that's obviously a big issue with a lot of people. They actually wonder why the lower parts of their hedge doesn't yes. look as green or exactly. as dying. Exactly, yeah. And that's so it. Okay. just taper it in a little bit. And another thing as well, if you did get a lot of snow, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Mm -hmm. If you have a square, it'll lodge on the top of it and then and what will happen more then is that the whole head should split out in the middle. It'll do more damage, so yeah. So just okay. to do it like that. Yeah. Now, as I was saying with the bigger leafed one, the laurel, if you've only got a small hedge, you probably are better off to do it with a hedge clippers. Okay. But well, that's no ordinary hedge clippers. It is not. No, it is not go, indeed. Go, go, gadget arm. <laughs> so this one, it's extendable. Now, excellent. if I could do it right, it'd be yeah. fine. <laughs> so that you can have a bigger reach. Oh, excellent, yeah. Because this one then is just the normal just one. Just If you've lower. got a lower hedge or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But um, with the bigger leafed ones then, say for example, if you were to do it with a hedge clipper, but as I say, if you've got a long area, Best to try use and the trimmers. Trimmers, yeah. But again, if you are doing it, try and cut up over a leaf. If you cut that leaf in half, yes, it kind of leaves it a little bit brown. Okay. But again, as I say, if you do it with the hedge trimmers, it goes brown. It will come back again. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Try not do it in strong sunlight because then okay. the, everything is visible and you're kind of scorching the plant a little, little bit. Yeah. So yeah. and okay. then obviously, if it's raining, do not do it because do, yeah. you'll be drowned. Another reason, yeah. <laughs> now um, there's another type of hedge that people might have and it's, it's in bloom at the moment. Yes, so it's in what do bloom, they do? so we definitely would not be cutting that, Alan. So anything that's flowering, any flowering hedges, this is a fuchsia. Yeah. Um, they won't be pruned until March. Okay. Yeah, so you right. leave them alone. Leave them so go. it's only all the evergreen hedges you're talking about, the laurels, the escalonias, the olerias, grisolinias, all of them you'll be pruning okay. from now on. Okay. And how long will, will the fuchsia kind of flower until? Fuchsia will flower up until about the end of October. Oh, okay. So there's so it's loads more of time. Reason, and yeah. like it comes into flower kind of July. So it's the later flowering one, so it's mm -hmm, lovely. Mm -hmm. Other flowering hedges that you'd have then would be the Escalonia that would be grown in seaside areas and it's got a lovely little pink flower on it. That should be finishing up flowering kind of September and you can prune that one then. Okay. It's just this one flowers so late that you might as well get all the value out of it. Okay, yeah. great, great. Well, brilliant. So that's some great hedging tips and, and I guess, as you said, it's important to know that the window is, is, is there for a reason and what it's there for. Exactly. And to try yeah. and, and trim everything yeah. back to, to make sure that next year everything looks well, great. Well, see, that's it. And as I say, the most important thing with hedging is why you cut it is to keep it nice and bushy down the base mm -hmm. you've got a good solid hedge because mm -hmm. like that you want it to block the wind you don't want it bare in the bottom as well as it not looking well it's not yeah. going to it's not going to do the purpose. this to the purpose yes. okay yeah right so let's now move on to uh, composting we've got our two big composting bins we have one here that i'm going to draw the uh, the lotto numbers out of uh, here in a few minutes and the winning ticket is no anyway tell us about uh, so the composting like now You've got your hedging and you've got all your clippings. Mm -hmm. What do I do with them? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, you can put them into your compost bin. Now, obviously, if you've got big, big pieces of branches or whatever, you'll have to Break chop them, them up. up a bit more. Okay. Sometimes as well, if you're cutting it, the hedge is near a lawn and the leaves and the twigs are there. Run the lawn more through it. That'll cut it up a little oh, bit okay. more. Yeah, it'll just and you'll be able to put that dice in. It, dice it. It's like making a stew. You're cutting up the exactly, hedge a little bit smaller. <laughs> if you put in big pieces into your compost, it obviously takes that much longer than yeah. for them to actually break down. Okay. Now, with this, this is the ordinary compost bin. Yeah, that'll be the, the most base, popular the one. The base of it, it's, it's vacant. There's no cover in the bottom of it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So the best place to put that is on the soil. Now you might say why it's because the worms will be in the soil and oh yeah they'll, they'll just they'll just hop up and, and they'll little, do the work for yeah, you yeah <laughs> absolutely like a little restaurant for exactly them. now the thing is as well what you put into a compost bin and what you not put into it which yeah, is most important that's, 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 that's and one thing and i guess that's one thing that people really need to know as in what what you know obviously you're going to put stuff from the garden in there but people have been looking at like food waste and things like that exactly and is that, is that yeah, helping and what doesn't your vegetable peelings your fruit peelings your eggshells your newspapers okay all of that can newspapers go into can. yes oh, wow. shred your newspapers as well right like shred your paper and put yeah. that in uh don't put in meat don't put in any cooked food whatever okay it won't break down but as well as that you're drawing rodents rodents yeah and we don't want that and right maggots. exactly so the best thing too when you're putting in compost is to try and put it in layers so start off with your grass cuttings down at the bottom okay and that'll kind of activate the whole compost 
and then maybe put a layer of shredded newspaper. Okay. Put in your vegetable peelings, put in your fruit peelings. Yeah. Again, put in your weeds from your lawn, put in your grass cuttings. Now, if you've used So you're kind of, weed are you kind of creating a, a cycle then would be very strict, or is that just at the very base to well, start off? if you could do it up along rather than just filling the whole bin with lawn cuttings, yeah, okay. because what will happen with that will be just stodge and nothing's there to break it down. Yes. So even if you could try and mix it, I know you have your fruit peelings or your veg peelings, fine, grand, you're mm -hmm. going to do it after every dinner or whatever. That's yeah. no problem. Yeah, yeah. But if you feel you're putting in loads and loads of that, add a different product. Yeah, yeah. Now also as well, there's a compost maker. Okay. Uh, you put that in and that actually breaks down. It's like a bacteria and it breaks it down and it actually generates heat into the compost and it's the heat that will actually break yeah. down the compost. Because it's funny, well. I, like I even just know from uh, from going through where I, you know, you put your grass and you cut your mm. grass, there's always, after when you go back, there's always a great amount of heat that kind of comes yes. out of it. Yeah, so that's, that's the process, that's of, the process breaking of breaking it. it all down. And again, that's the thing is you put it actually into sunshine as well. Put the composter where the heat will hit it. Right. Now, the other thing, or the negative thing on that then is that it might dry out too much. So just keep an eye on it and keep the compost bin okay. moist. Yeah. The best thing, the ideal thing, not everybody does it, is to turn it about every five to six weeks. Okay. Like don't turn it any sooner than that because then you're breaking down the whole composting and the heat. You're kind of taking away the heat. So leave yeah. it for about five weeks and turn it and throw it all back in again. So what would you do when you're turning it, right? Are you literally talking you're about taking the top off? Tape off and you can actually lift it. No, you can lift, oh, lift that it. off. Okay. Lift that off. Just put it in another place and shovel it where fork and it back in. And shovel it fork it back in. Yeah, okay, and that'll right. do it. I know that's a lot of work. Yeah. So if you don't want to go to that. If you don't want to go to that, we have the day's <laughs> lotto numbers coming to you from Boyles. And I'm breaking it here. And oh, it's great. called yeah. a Carberry Roto. Now, with this one, again, the same principles apply, mm -hmm. and you put it in, but once it's full, seal it. Don't add anything else. Okay. And leave it for about six weeks only, and you'll right. have compost. Now, how okay. do you know when it's compost? It's actually like the compost you buy in the bag. It's okay. nice, black, crumbly. Yeah. It's actually better. Like to say then the likes of eggshells has calcium in it. Obviously that's going to be good for your plants Brilliant down your the plants. line. Absolutely. You've yeah. got your banana peels, which is potassium. Mm -hmm. Again, all adding fruit. So you think so you're just throwing it away, but yeah. you're enriching your soil and you're yeah. going to enrich your plants. And it's great here as well because again it just it gives you a little uh, idea of like exactly. what to put in. What not to put you know, in and what, what not to put, put in, in and yes. stuff like that. So it's a great uh, a great little So addition. they're very, very handy as mm -hmm. well, and you can have that near the house. And what you do with the rotor one, you should go out every couple of days, give it a spin around. Yeah. That saves the work. Of the, shovel the shoveling every six weeks, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just spin it around. It's easy spin around, yeah. and it's perfect. Now you won't obviously have the benefit of the earthworms uh, kind of no, breaking it down. No, so you won't. So you could actually need use the, the compost maker. Yeah. But if you're Carota. using different products in it, as in different peelings and wet weeds, and mm. even your vegetables now, do you know, like your cabbages that might be finished. As yes. long as there's no insects or anything on them, just shred up the leaves and throw them into it then as well. Yeah, okay. And it's one way of cleaning up your garden or cleaning up your veggie patch is to use the compost bins. And what about, you just mentioned weeds. Are yes. weeds, or can you put weeds in or is that not going to possibly bring them back? Just as long as they don't actually have Any seeds. flowers or seeds oh, on them. Okay, but right. But this Garotia actually kills the weed seeds as well from, okay, from re-germinating. So yeah. it's probably good to put that in then so as then well. You're, so then that means your compost will be... It'll be sterilised. It will be, be sterilised, yeah. Will be yeah. Sterilized. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Right, so we can, um, that's some great composting tips and I have, I remember seeing this last year and going, I, I'd love to get one, uh, so I still haven't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they are very handy. Yeah. They're and they're tidy then as well and they yeah. can be put away in the corner Absolutely. of the garden. and as you said, yeah. just seal it up for six weeks and, and Exactly, and, and it's like one that. way of getting rid because believe me, the amount of waste that we have mm -hmm. and looking for places to put it. Excellent, and excellent. that's it. Right, so we're going to finish off just with one or two little uh, tips as well that's too. Right. Trish, you mentioned. That's right, I'm work on oh, this one. I'll tell you, we're, 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 we're <laughs> Cramming it all in, so we are. Well, now I suppose like that. Now everybody has planted loads of fruit bushes and the vegetables, and now you're in the abundance of harvesting all these and benefiting from all the lovely yeah. flavors and growing your own and everything. So I suppose tomatoes is a big one. We're getting a lot of people in, and they're going. They're still kind of green. They're not reddening up. Okay. We had a great week of sunshine there a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That reddened a lot of them. But if they're not reddening up. The thing to do then is to remove some of the lower leaves. You don't actually need them all now at the moment. What you're trying to do is to let light into it. Also as well, if there is side shoots still on it, which means you've got a straight stem and you might have a side shoot coming out of it, pinch them off it as well. Okay. Um, feed them with tomato food as well. 
very important. Give it a final, the a final drive. Yeah, yeah, and also as well, the tomato food brings out the flavour in the tomato as oh, well. Okay. So yeah. feed them like every 10 to 12 days. Keep them moist as well. Yeah. Obviously, depending on the weather and the amount of moisture that's going up from the ground or the pots, uh, mm -hmm. just to keep water that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, raspberries now, you'll have loads of raspberries. Sometimes you might have too many raspberries and you're thinking, what can I do or how can I harvest them? Or yeah. what'll... You can actually just put them on a tray flat put them into the freezer, let them freeze, take them out and put them into bags. And okay. you, can, you can use them then in your smoothies or whatever afterwards or take them out and let them defrost. And you could do that with any of the fruits? You can really? do that with your black currants, your red currants, your white currants, all mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Another thing as well is your herbs. The herbs now will be kind of getting woody, they might be going into flour, yeah. so the flavour wouldn't be there. So and the sometimes like you're not always going to use all the herbs and no. that's the thing you're afraid then that they're wasting them. Exactly. You know? Now the thing is, even if you're not using them a lot, just keep them cut back so it keeps the nice new growth. But now is a good time to actually harvest uh, herbs to keep them for maybe Christmas or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can actually dry them or again you can freeze them in ice cubes. Okay. Now the best time to collect your herbs is in the morning because they're at their freshest then. Right, so you're so free to freezing them. them in ice cubes. You freeze them in ice cubes. So say yeah. for example you've got your rosemary or your basil, you take off little pieces of them, put them in with the water and you just freeze. freeze them as your ice okay. cube. So if you need your basil, pop it into your into whatever. Into your thing and it's just, <laughs> just a little bit of water exactly, as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And the same with bay leaves or anything yeah. like that, you'll have them for your stews. So, Brilliant. do you know, even though a lot of people when they're growing veg, they do grow too much yeah and they're going wow what am i going to do with all this so there is ways of harvesting and storing all of these so okay. just look into them brilliant great yeah. excellent well that's fantastic tips trish thanks a million and uh, more thought on your uh, composting and a bit of planning to do and a way that you could actually of course help the environment and help next year's uh, crop of fruit and exactly. shrubs with yes. some very enriched yeah. compost yeah. trish thanks very much great to see you again and uh, as always um it's it's great to have the tips um this week from you so listen and that's pretty much it from us here in Boyles of Calorglan. So for myself, Trish and everyone here, have a good week. We'll talk to you next week. Happy gardening.